the Burr method is one of the best strategies for building long-term wealth, right? That's exactly right. So the Burr method, in my opinion, has has five, if not six, advantages. So number one, you're going to create cash flow because you're going to acquire rental properties. That's really what this method is designed to do. It's to help you acquire rentals. And rentals, you know, if done right, will pay you to own them. You charge more in rent than all of the the net operating it or all of the expenses, right? So your net operating income on these properties is positive. It's cash flow. It's amazing, right? Number two is it's good debt. A lot of people are scared of debt. Well, if you put debt on a credit card like one of these guys, you got to pay it back typically. But if you go rack up debt on an asset, a property that's rented out, the tenants are going to pay that debt off for you. Now, it may not happen in a day or a week or a month. But over a course of 5, 10, 20 years, you can have houses that are paid off. In fact, I got a house right here that I paid off just a couple weeks ago. And this house is worth over 100000 bucks. So having good debt is a massive, massive, massive advantage over having bad debt. So you have to understand the difference between these two things. So number one, cash flow. Number two, good debt. Number three is the ability to use leverage. And Jay, let me tell you, I love leverage. My middle name is leverage. Not literally, but it should be. Here's why. I use leverage to position myself into deals, right? I do marketing. I have virtual assistants that help me set appointments and send offers. Once I locate a deal, I'm going to leverage big time on a title company to make sure it's legit and that the title's clean. And then I'm going to leverage a private money or hard money lender to buy it. Then I'm going to leverage general contractors to fix it. Then I'm going to leverage property managers to rent it. And then last but not least, I'm going to leverage my long-term banks and credit unions to reposition the debt into a long-term loan at a cheap rate, ultimately paying back my private or hard money lenders. So leverage is in every step of the process, but leverage is what allows me to do cool things like this with you today and not be out on the job site with a hammer and a paintbrush. I don't like doing that type of stuff. I like talking to people like you that are also experts. So leverage would be number three. Number four would be appreciation. This is really just so much more. This is really more for rentals. Uh, but the Burr method will allow you to acquire rentals with little to no money. So it kind of goes like this, right? Uh, but um, appreciation over the last 36 years, we've seen, we've seen an average of six to six and a half percent year over year. Right. So I never bank on appreciation, Jay. I'll tell you, I think people that buy a property and hope to sell it in six months to a year, they're speculating. But if you have a long enough mindset, 5, 10, 15, maybe even 20 or 30 years, the odds of the property appreciating is very, very likely. It's not guaranteed, but it's very, very likely. The longer time span, the more likely you're going to get to take advantage of appreciation. Number five, tax benefits. A lot of people don't know this, but you only pay tax when you earn income or create an income or a taxable event because of income. So if your goal every day is to wake up and to make money, you're going to guarantee that you're going to have to pay tax on that. But if your goal every day is like me to wake up and create wealth, wealth isn't taxed. Income is taxed. So instead of flipping that property and putting 20 or 30 grand in my pocket, I'm going to hold it and I'm going to have 20 or $30,000 worth of equity. And it could be double that in some cases, right? But that 20 or $30,000 worth of equity, I'm going to use to position myself in the deal with the refi, but I'm also going to have that available and I can sell the property if I need to, or I can borrow against the property to access that money. But that 20 or $30,000 or $30, worth of equity, Jay, is an income. It's wealth that's been created. And you don't pay tax when you create wealth. You only pay tax when you create income. So my goal isn't to necessarily make more money. It's to create as much wealth as I possibly can because I can defer paying taxes on it until I sell it and actually have an income event. And then Jay, last but not least, number six, wealth creation in and in itself, right? So taxes, you don't pay tax on wealth creation. You pay it on income. But real estate in the Burr method is one of the best ways to massively expand your wealth in a short period of time because the tax laws are written by people that own real estate. They're written by rich people. When's the last time you saw somebody go from White Castle to the state or even a federal Senate? 
It doesn't happen, my friend. What happens is wealthy people run for office and they spend a lot of money to campaign. And then when they get there, they write the laws to protect themselves and their friends. I don't necessarily agree with this, Jay, but what I can tell you is this. There's 76,000 pages of tax code. Three or four of those pages tell you when, how, and where to pay. The other 75,900 and change are going to tell you how to not pay it, defer paying it, pay it later, and avoid it altogether legally. So real estate is one of the best ways to create wealth because it's actually written into the tax law. Every year that you own a rental property, you can depreciate that property. You're using leverage to get into it and own it. It's cash flowing and you're not paying taxes on the wealth that you're creating, only the income. Now, the income could be taxable, of course, the cash flow, right? Of course. But at the end of the day, the, the wealth or the equity that is captured isn't. So my goal isn't to go make an extra three to 500 grand a year. That just means I'm going to give Uncle Sam a raise. My goal is to go create three to $500,000 or double in some cases worth of wealth every year, because then I can compound that wealth and I can do it with lots of leverage. I can make money in terms of cash flow along the way. Oh, and by the way, if I ever want to refinance one of these properties and pull out some of that wealth, it's not taxed because it's debt. It's not income. It's debt when you refinance and pull money out. So the advantages are a mile long. I could go on if you want me to. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, David. I wish you would get a little bit more excited about the Burr method. I Most love this method. <laughs>